the market had a big day today in that it went down a lot from where it was, at least a lot for one day. In the grand scheme of things, it's still way up there right off of all-time highs. I don't know if a lot of people thought that we were going to bounce from the low of the COVID crash all the way up to making new highs, at least in the tech sector, but that's what happened. I think what the crash did is it sort of sped up a move into tech that was already happening. I don't know if we're going to be at like the matrix anytime soon. I wanted to keep this brief and also very broad in general, but the video might just go totally off the rails and I'm sure I'll have to cut it up a lot. Essentially what I want to do is encourage everybody who might not already be interested in the market to at least familiarize themselves with it a little bit, at least on a basic level, because I think whether or not you choose to engage in it, you're part of it, and I think that it's also where wealth is created. The S&P 500 was down 4% at one point today. For all intents and purposes, you can track what the market is doing by just looking at the S&P 500. We're still way up there, but that sort of day indicates that things could get interesting. We might just have that dip bought up and things will continue higher, but take a look at the market and, and try to see what's going on. One thing to keep in mind is that the economy and the market are two different things and the market may be doing really well and people that are invested there and a lot of people who are very wealthy are doing really well, yet a lot of people in the economy are not. And that's sort of a, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer sort of thing. When the COVID crash happened and things were low, that was a buying opportunity for people that had a lot of spare cash. And the people who had a lot of spare cash were probably your wealthy people. And the common middle class people or your average American or average person was probably more worried about feeding their family and not losing their job and wasn't really trying to see what cheap tech stocks they could scoop up at the time. Although I'm sure some people did. One way to look at markets is to look at candles, and that's my favorite way to look at them. A candle is a visual representation of the price action during a certain time period. The candle shows the open, close, high, and low. A candle could represent a minute and show you what the price did in any minute, and a candle could represent a whole month. Um, these are four-hour candles. You could see in a four hour period how far the S&P 500 went down today or SPY which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 you could see how far it went down today compared to the uptrend that was happening in the days leading up to it you could zoom out and look at the daily candle and then you could see where we are in the grand scheme of things and where we are compared to the COVID dump and uh, it's got this kind of fractal effect where you can keep zooming out but the patterns kind of stay the same I would encourage everyone to invest I would not encourage hardly anyone to trade unless you're just willing to go through a rigorous gauntlet of self-discovery and discipline and emotional management and stress and losing money and making money and hitting all these emotional highs and lows along the way um, it's quite a mental pursuit one important point I want to hit on Robinhood is an online broker that has come onto the scene in the past five years. It's attracted a lot of people because it has commission-free trading. Uh, it attracted so many people that the already established internet brokers like E-Trade and Fidelity and TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab and all of them had to eventually make uh, trades commission-free just to compete with Robinhood or make sure that Robinhood didn't take too much of a bite out of their market share. I'm sure they were reluctant to do that, but it was good for anyone that wanted to get into the market. With that came a lot of opportunity, but it also introduced a lot of risk because a lot of people, before doing any research, are jumping in to Robinhood and then jumping into risky financial instruments like options, which can yield you a lot of money because of their inherent nature of being leveraged, but also come along with an equal amount of risk or even more risk. And I would encourage people to, unless you've done your homework, stay away from the people you see on YouTube who are saying like, hey, check out my million dollar strategy where I can make one to two hundred dollars in the first five minutes of the market being open every morning and go open a Robinhood account and copy what I'm doing. You know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. 
So in summary, these are really interesting times for everyone to live in, and we're all taking it day by day, but I think it's interesting to see what the market is doing and how it reacts to what's going on and how people react to what the market is doing. Um, don't go jump in and start a brokerage account right away, but pay attention to it. Maybe Google the S&P 500 and see what it did today and see what it did the past 10 years and see what it did in the 2008 financial crisis because that's really interesting, at least to me. If you have any questions, I'm no guru or expert, but I know a fair amount and I'd be happy to answer them and um, never give up.